uh, we're now actually going to have um, Tom Walsh, editor of the book, uh, read some of the poems um, from the book itself. So if Tom could come up and uh, give him a nice round of applause. I have seldom been in such eloquent uh, company. I want to thank uh, the Abbot for launching the book and I want to thank the teacher for coming along and also the first citizen, um, Michael McLaughlin, and also my family, my sister who is here, and my brother Jim, and my patient wife, Nula. So, and a lot of friends that I have um, here in the town. They've been very supportive of me, and I was delighted to get the opportunity to hook up with Liam Lyons. Uh, I had seen his photographs, obviously, as an internationally known photographer. His, one of his pictures hangs in the White House, I believe, so he's very well known, and it's obvious why. Poems are a bit like pictures, I suppose. They capture a certain moment of inspiration in life. They capture beauty, and they capture a certain relationship with beauty. And it was a, 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 it was a labor of love to be able to match up some of the poems with some of the pictures that Liam had. We had a great help here from Carmel, his archivist. I want to thank the Mayo, uh, Mayo County Library as well for all their help. And uh, all the people who helped me along the line. I want to thank Des Mahan for introducing me to Liam in the first case. The poems that you find here, what are they like? Is there a, is there a theme? The only theme is, I suppose they're all a bit like myself, they're old. <laughs> uh, I, I learned to love poetry from my mother, not really from school. My mother was able to quote the deserted village and High Brazil, the Isle of the Blessed. And she would come out with these lines uh, at, uh, you know, unpredictable moments. And, she, uh, and it's from her I really learned to love the music of words. She learned everything by heart, by rote. When she passed away, God be good to her, I found among her possessions a, a tattered copy of the deserted village. It was stitched on the cover with a, a homemade bit of cardboard. And all of the words came back to me with a Sabbath sound. She, uh, the, her voice still uh, rings in my heart whenever I read some of these old poems. What's common about them is that you would find them all in Irish school textbooks. This is about the seventh book that I have published of old poems, the favorite poems you learn in school. I won't dwell on them because they were published by a rival publisher and Shane might be too happy if I started talking. But believe it or not, the, the, they are still selling and one of them is in its 15th reprint. So that's remarkable. And I hope that you will like them. I know you will remember them. I know they'll ring a bell. There are some Irish poets here, there are poems in Irish and in English. And I'll start off by reading one of the most poignant poems, I think. It's, it has a haunting, kind of a sad quality about it. It's by Pauli Pierce, who we claim he's of the West, and we have reason to do that because he spent so much of his time in Rossmo, because we all know you can see Pierce's cottage there still. Um, it's a poem, believe it or not, that he wrote the night before he was executed in 1960. It's called The Wayfarer. The beauty of the world hath made me sad, this beauty that will pass. Sometimes my heart hath shaken with great joy to see a leaping squirrel in a tree, or a red ladybird upon a stalk or little rabbits in a field at evening lit by a slanting sun, or some green hill where shadows drifted by, some quiet hill where mountainy men had sown and soon would reap near to the gate of heaven, or children with bare feet upon the sands of some ebbed sea, or playing on the streets of little towns in Connacht, things young and happy, and then my heart has told me these will pass, will pass and change, will die and be no more. Things bright and green, things young and happy, and I have gone upon my way 
sorrowful. 